Hello and you're very welcome to the JMAC Podcast. I'm John Wan. Of course, this podcast brought to you by orgaretch.com and it's actually Use the promo code JMAC Podcast to get 15% off on orgaretch.com. Get the best games, goals, equipment on attack today. Be attack minded. And today I'm joined by former Fermanian senior footballer Ryan McCluskey to talk about the current state of affairs, his uh, role with the Fermanian senior lads um, this year, and um, all a bit of crack and all a bit of banter. So, Ryan, how are you keeping? Not too bad, John. I know uh, I'm going to have to apologise first and foremost. We've been trying to get this done for quite a while and uh, it's been my fault actually that it hasn't happened. So it's good to eventually get on and uh, yeah, my apologies. No worries at all, my man. No worries at all. Um, all's good, thank God. And no, it, it, it's great to get catching up. So all's, all's busy for yourself. And um, yeah, it's, we're looking forward to a busy weekend this weekend. You've uh, two of the all Ireland semi-finals, Dublin against Kerry, Derry against Galway and the Total Cup final Calvin against the Smeets. So it's a busy weekend. So how is life with yourself? Obviously, you uh, finished up with the Fermanagh Senior Footballers about two weeks ago. Yeah, uh, listen, John and I, we... we... Uh, had a had a busy enough I suppose year overall um, with with the Fermanagh side of things. Um, listen, it, it it was, I suppose yeah, a great opportunity for for myself to get back into that environment and I suppose to realise how chaotic and mad and time consuming that environment was as, as well. Um, we we probably just missed out in promotion the previous year. It would have been under probably I Racy before he we went to, to Cavan then as well. So, you know, I suppose for, for that backroom team to get in and get a chance, it, it was good now. And uh, I, I suppose that the year was a bit fragmented. We we started and, and, and listened. There was a lot of development work probably had to go on, John, um, in terms of, of training ground, uh, the setup, the gyms and stuff like that. So, you know, unfortunately, the start of the year probably would have been... I doing a lot of that work and, and getting that kind of up to a, a decent standard and I suppose then we, we started to, to really get a chance to, to work with the players and, and try and develop them from, from there on in, you know, so really busy, but listen, you know, happy that, that I got the opportunity and, and happy to be in and, and get uh, back in that environment. Mm, absolutely, I suppose it's good to kind of cut your teeth into it. Obviously, you're doing a bit with uh, Mullahorn here in Cavan as well, so you're flat out with that. I suppose, uh, from my experience, what, what did you make of the year itself? Obviously, uh, he's got a taste of the Talton Cup, he's got a taste of the Ultra Championship, and he's had a fairly good league campaign. But what was the year like for yourself and I suppose the whole team? Uh, I, I listen, um, I, I suppose from from a personal point of view, um, it, it was rough enough. I, I unfortunately lost my my brother in in the year as well, and, course, and just yeah. kind of you know, you know coming to terms with that was quite difficult. But for me, listen, the the, the coaching side of things and, and working with the players, you know, it was a great. I I, I suppose help. Um, even just from 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 a mental kind of side of things. Um, to be honest, li- listen, I, I would have loved to do more coaching when I was involved, and maybe you know have a bit more work in, in that side of things. But you know, it was it was a chance to to take a step back as well, um, and and get a look just at at you know why there's there's a fine group of lads that are starting to to kind of come through. There, there's a good blend now of of kind of senior players. There's a lot of young, talented players coming through. Um, but there's massive work that, that needs to be done, listen, from 21s, um, you know, from from even any of those development youth sides kind of coming through, the, you know, and, and I think that was a big thing as well throughout the year. It was something that was identified. So, you know, our, our structures from from youth up really need to be developed and, and kind of, you know, you know, things need to change in, in terms of uh, what, what we're doing um, from a player development side of things to ensure that, you know, the players coming through at senior level are, are on a sound footing that they can come in and kind of get on with business more than anything else. So it was great to, to kind of see that and, and work with some of the players and, and to, I work with some 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 brilliant members of, of that backroom team. And, and listen, we were probably maybe a game away, you know, that Wicklow game stands out in the league that, that we, we drew and if we got something that day, that could have been a, a change in, in where we were at and we, we could have maybe pushed on and maybe got a promotion from there, but it, it wasn't to be, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, um, it, it kind of petered out, unfortunately, then to defeat yourselves, you, you know, in, in the, in the Touch and Cup. But, mm-hmm. you, you know, you have to credit the the lads as well, you know, you know, they didn't shy away from it when we asked them to come back in and commit to the, the, the Tolson Cup as well. Mm. They did so, and, and they really give it everything I as well. You know, we, we were beaten by a better Calvin side. We, we didn't, you know, have any excuses on on, on that front. And, uh, you know, the lads did, you know, definitely in, improve in certain areas, but have, have much to do as well. Mm, absolutely. I suppose uh, 
Clocker, how time consuming is it all? Because obviously, you know, you know, Kieran Donnelly is the ma- Kieran Donnelly is the manager. Um, you know, he takes obviously a lot of the work, but we obviously see, like, obviously I see with Cav and you've obviously Rice with Wenham and you know, Sean Johnson, Mickey Graham, like, and I, I could just imagine they might have worked that to do. So, how much work and time does go into Ryan? And obviously, you're doing a bit with Mullahor now. Maybe that's a tad bit less stressful, but. I'd say it's very much time consuming. <laughs> well, maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a straight comment. <laughs> I hope some of these boys are listening to it actually as well. Maybe these Mullahorn boys to hear that. I'll be, be sending it to them. Don't worry. <laughs> man, good man. Um, no, it, it it is. Listen, and I suppose I I, I was like that as a player. Um, I was completely immersed in the whole thing, and it is just the same when it comes to you know the management and coaching side of things. That when usually I go into something, I'm, I'm usually all in. And in some ways, I suppose yeah, it's a good thing. And in other ways. When you shouldn't let it affect you, it, it unfortunately does, you know. And and uh, th- those defeats at the weekend, you know, you should be leaving them at the, at the door when you're on the way into the house. But unfortunately, oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and anyone who knows me will hopefully say the same, you know. So it, it's very much time consuming, and for me, it's it's to to the extent you know, you know where if, if I'm possibly in bed and something comes up that I need to to address, you know, I'll, I'll get up and I'll write it down or I'll I'll try and do something on it. You, you know, it, it is like that, and you, you know, there, there's no real switch off when when I am involved. And maybe somewhere along the lines, maybe that's what I need over the next couple of years, and maybe to to maybe get the the batteries recharged and, and go from there. But listen, it, it's a large part of my life. It always has been, and uh, I, I I wouldn't really change it for the world. You know. I suppose, like it, the time that goes into it, I know obviously the years you, 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 you did have, and supposed to like the defeat against Throne in the Ulster Championship, and then we all kind of thought the Cavan game you know, would have been closer than it was, maybe in the Total Cup. So, what did you kind of make off the Total Cup there, uh, Ryan? Obviously, like it, it's about time something has been brought in, you know, obviously the final off it is this weekend, the inaugural competition that it is going to be, Ryan. So, what have you made of it so far? Um, I, I, I would credit the, the players highly on, on their application from, from all counties, you, you know. There were not too many stories, probably exclude down, um, and that was through a number of maybe issues that were going on in camp. But, you know, I think all the counties that were involved with it really kind of give it a good crack. And, and there have been some brilliant games as well uh, throughout the competition. In terms of the GA and the marketing side of things, I think this, been, this has been well documented over the last number of months as well, that it could have been done a lot better. Listen, you know, um, in terms of fixtures and, and fixturing and uh, how they basically I promoted the whole thing. I think it was a bit thrown together, to be fair as well, John. Um, at unfair. Modern Clucker, a tea in Crow Park, a tea in the middle of Crow Park. That's that's yeah. not bad. Now, come on. Well, well, I suppose it 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 did offer the players listen something to to get their teeth back into, but <clears> you know. I know managers as well had had their say in it. Um, I know some managers come out and said that that competition, you know, was important for for those group of players and their their players. I suppose when you when you're sitting probably in that third league maybe position or you're you're, you're in the middle of maybe Division Three, you know, we still thought we could compete with with some of those th- sides maybe at the bottom of two, maybe in the middle of two as well. Um, and maybe on our day, maybe rattle side, you know, you know, if you look back at, at that throne game, you know, again, missed chances that that day absolutely killed us. And, and we went in at half time and, and probably should have been winning, uh, you know, and, and by a lot more at, at half time as well, going in and, and winning and maybe stretched to five, six points at half time. Unfortunately, we, we went in. I think we were drawn at half time that day. Um, but we believed that uh, we, we could rattle and we, we certainly seen chinks and and their arm, armor, and we we felt that uh, we we could maybe make a dent in them, and and that was the case. You know, we we have enjoyed even the qualifying system over the last number of years. So we we believe that if we got the right draw, we could get a bit of momentum and, and maybe push the whole thing on. But listen, the, the Tolson Cup was it was an option for us. We we regrouped the players. That the players done extremely well to get back and focused on it, and we've seen it as more time with those players to develop, not just for that competition, but for further down the, you know, the line as well. And I, I know Calvin from even working in the county, that has been the same. And, you know, I can't discredit them, Westmeath, you know, going into this this weekend's finals. But I, I don't know, you're just looking for it to be in a bigger stage. You know, I don't know if, you know, putting it in for a semi-final is the right place either. Um, why why can it not be a curtain raiser before the big day? I know there's going to be limited numbers, um, and fans would want to be there on on the big day as well. But I ju- I just think they could do a lot more with it. Basically, I and and I know um, maybe they've been dipping their feet to see what the reaction would be. But f- for me, 
they could do a lot more with it. You, you know, Talshan Cup winners this year probably should, you, you know, enter maybe even a, at a latter, you know, stage of, of the qualifiers next year. You know, why not have another incentive? Even the finalists, you know, why not throw them in? So back to your statement on the big T, you know, if there's a bit of thinking to be done, you know, who's doing it? And do they, do they even talk to players? You know, that's the other, the other side of it, you know, because I think that would help. 100%. And, uh, referring back to Fermanagh as well, uh, Clucker, obviously, how much of a change is it from maybe playing to kind of being coached? Because obviously when you're playing, you turn up, you do your analysis, whatever, and you, you just kind of take part. But when you're coaching, it's a completely different kettle of fish. So is it much of a change difference? Massively. You know, you know I think if I was ever going to go into that situation again, I think I'd probably be looking for a brand new phone and a new phone contract probably more than anything else. So the, the phone is usually hopping and uh, you're you're just listening in constant demand and, and you have to be accessible. That's that's a big thing as well. But um, no, it's 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 brilliant listen, you know, to, to be back in that environment and you, you don't switch off, you know, it's it's just constant. Uh, it is constant, but um I, I enjoy that side, listen, as a player. I'm I'm not gonna lie, you know, I, I do enjoy that side of things in, in management and I uh, listen, you know, it's it's maybe something in in the next number of years where, you know, I might go back and, and get involved in in maybe a different capacity, you never know. But uh, I've I've loved, you know, my time even in Borough. In club football mm. and coaching down there, um, and I've, I've loved you know the, the short period I've, I've been down in Mullahorn. You know, there's some brilliant people about the club. They're very proactive. They're they're trying to push the whole club on as well, and, and that's all you can ask for as as a coach as well. And working with with one of my close friends, Shane, down there, you know, and and enjoying the the, the car journeys, and <laughs> you, know, you can't beat that, you know, as well. So that that has to be part of it, and you have to get that enjoyment, or you know, there's no point doing it as well, John. <clears throat> Percent. I suppose is is Kieran Donnelly the right man to take for Man forward as well, uh, Clucker as well, because obviously like it, you know, it, it's a very high demanded job, and obviously for Man is a proud football and county, and you know Sean Quigley and the likes kind of very proud men down there, uh, Clucker. So is is he the right man to take for Man forward? He, listen, he, he he would know a lot of of that youth and and that uh, talent kind of coming through from his time with with Oma CBS. He he would have direct kind of. I uh, connections with with St Michael's as well, and and he would know, you know, the the talent and stuff, which provides a lot of the talent as well for for our underage sides as well. So, um, no, he 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 has listened, brilliant scope and knowledge on on the the youth players coming through, and um, I know he has committed to that long term side of things as well, and he has a strong group of of of. Uh, management team as well installed there so you know he, he is he has been a good appointment as well and, and Kieran listen is he, you know he's a brilliant energy about him as well and, and he has you know that uh, he, he has good charisma he speaks very well as well so you know he hopefully will get back maybe a couple of players this year that will add to the whole thing the likes of the Cullens hopefully will, will return um, so that will be a massive plus defensively and, and I know that's an area that, that needs to be improved and um, I suppose let's hope that he can retain um, some of the other players. I, I know there has been talk of a couple of players maybe doing a bit of travelling. Let's hope that isn't the, the case as well. So, you know, if, if he can retain those those players, that squad, and obviously add to that as well, um, maybe get a full year out of Alton Kelm um, and, and bring in a couple of lads, you, you know, that that's imperative as well. But uh, listen, like, like anything else, it, it is a results-driven business. And, you know, if, if it isn't the case, and I, you know, that, that uh, the results aren't there. It's it's like it doesn't matter what county you're in, you know as well. You're 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 at the the end of a sword somewhere along the lines, you know, and you're you're you need know, you need to get the results. But I, you know, he, he's put some solid foundations in the, in this year, and you know I, th- I think that's been a problem maybe in our own county as well. We've jumped ship far too many times, and uh, it shouldn't be the case. So so give Kieran and, and the backroom team time, and and let's see see where it goes, you know. Stability is huge in football, uh, right? A clock without a shadow of doubt. And I suppose obviously you're, you're uh, in the backroom team with uh, Shane McCabe and Willow Horn there. So, yeah. Ian, kind of enjoying your stint up in this beautiful county of ours? Beautiful county, uh, and um, it, it has been, listen, it has been. Um, again, I suppose it would have dipped in the, the odd session here or there with, with Shane, but, uh, you know, there was going to be no commitment until the, the season was over with, with Fermanagh. Um, and I have, I listened to the whole club. Um, have welcomed ourselves in and uh, fr- from the get-go I know Shane has spoken highly of anything you know he's asked of, of the board the board have kind of given him and, and you, you know I it's, it's a very proactive club I overall you know you can only see when you're down there I suppose 
the demands of, of even just the, the one pitch, and I know there's a bit of a training pitch down the road in, in Glan, I think it is as well, but, you know, from, you, you know, there's rounders going on, there's, you know, multiple other, you know, I think it's probably one of the only teams, John, maybe you can correct me as well, in Ireland, or clubs in Ireland, sorry, that has a senior active hurling, um, Gaelic rounders, um, and maybe maybe there's, I don't know, maybe there's other uh, mm. sports as well going on, but listen, it's it's a real hub and real hive of, the, of that community, and, and now we, we've been very happy, and, and listen, the players... Have, have really bought into it. We've lost a couple to to America, unfortunately, which which hasn't been ideal. But you know, all the players who, who have been there and I have committed, and you know, hopefully the, the the club are moving in the right direction, and hopefully we can be part of that as well. Mm, absolutely. I suppose that if you've been to any games, are you impressed with the standard that's in Calvin so far? Well, I, I suppose unfortunately I've I've only really been to about two or three games now at, at this stage. Um, it's been unfortunate, listen, John, uh, that. The, the accessibility we talked about this off air, I suppose, as well, you know, of of getting those uh, senior players in, you, you know, and, and any county players in, you know, other clubs as well have have had problems. We've certainly had problems getting getting access to them, you know, from my, my own situation coming in and, and even Shane, you know, I think I think we're only two games into the Fermanagh League campaign at this stage, mm-hmm. you know, so it's it's crazy that we're, we're finishing up and and Calvin the league campaign and then into that championship phase. <clears throat> Excuse me, and in probably other counties, you're you're only really starting maybe some of the the real um I intense league football that you know you know some counties and and that's that's ourselves included would have ran leagues for kind of club players and that kind of point system would have added towards then the start of of your league. So it's it's been frustrating that we we haven't had access to them and even the the twenty ones who had a brilliant twenty one campaign campaign as well with with Calvin, we had access to them lads late, but. Um, I, I think you know there could be a bit of work done there overall to to maybe uh, maybe look at that fixture inside of things as well, so so that you know clubs get access to their players as well, you, you know, and, and have access to their their full county players. But um, the standard, yeah, has has been been very good, and and you know I've been impressed with, it, with a few of our lads, and you know it would be nice if if a few of those lads could kick on and maybe look at getting maybe county call ups next year. Well, in one sense, it would be nice if they can go on. On the other hand, it could decimate a squad if that was the case mm. then. So there's arguments, obviously, for and against. But um, no, it's, it's 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 been good and it's it's been nice to bump into a few ex-foes, you could say, as well. You know, So it's uh, been a very enjoyable thus far. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're in the semi-final. We're on the other end of the draw. So it could be Corner Fane, Mullahorn final, uh, McClus- <laughs> uh, Mr. McCluskey. So it'll be rubber shoulders with you that day, fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a massive game. It's a massive game, I know, for, for both clubs. And, and uh, winners obviously have that that chance at, at promotion then. And, and getting into promote, sorry, promotion place is massive. And I'm, I'm sure all clubs in, in that, you know, the position as well. And, and you, you looked at the league campaign, John, as well. And we talked about it, you know, that league, everybody should, went to the last day. Everybody has beaten everybody at, at different stages. And I know we had to beat Q Collins in that last game. And... Uh, we're fortunate enough to, to do so, but like they were sitting sitting fourth, I think, and we were sitting joint top at that stage. But there was a load of permutations that, that kind of worked as well. So, listen, we're we're happy and fortunate we got over that that scenario, and, and we're now facing I from the end in, in a couple of weeks' time. So, um, we we've I refocused and and you know we've, we've a couple of big weeks ahead of us, and, and let's hope that we can get through it injury free and turn a part of that, and, and maybe we'll. Get a clash against you, maybe in the final. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> all I'm saying is against Rublin, don't look to your left or right because Martin Dunn's going to be along the sideline with you. So you've bad <laughs> memories of that man. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to, to I'll not have to maybe chase him. Like, <laughs> you might have to. You might have to. <laughs> maybe try and thump him or, or boot him or kick him to try and slow him down. Maybe you have to. Maybe maybe it, maybe it's the other way around. He might have to do that to me, which would be nice now. But uh, no, it's, it's it's been it's been spot on now um, as well, John. So, no, it is, and I know I bumped into me Hall in there recently as well. Um, I and, and with Q Collins, so it is nice to see a couple of faces along the lines. And, and listen, it's it's the joys of the game, isn't it? We we kill each other on the pitch, and then as as long as you can put it to bed, you know, at, at that final whistle, and it does be nice. Listen, it's it's nice to bump bump into 
faces and, and to get a catch up. And uh, I, I know I, I'd be kind of chatting some of these lads on, on social media as well. And that's where it's brilliant as well. You know, you do, I know Big Donners is a big Liverpool fan. I think Shawnee Johnson was you're saying as well. I think Shawnee is as well. Um, and young Flanagan, uh, that you're you're doing a bit with later on as well. So would have would have had the don't know whether it was pleasure or torment, maybe marking some of these lads you, at times. Uh, some right ballers there, uh, Cooker. Uh, right. some, some quality operators now, you know. So, but uh, no, it's all all good. Um, give us a shout out, John, maybe as well. Actually, when when we're here, um, Dom Corrigan actually has just recently retired. Oh God, yeah, of course, yeah. I Dom was was in the job for for thirty seven uh, years and and listen was an unbelievable uh, role model and you know somebody who who I you know worked under and and number of different capacities in school level and at county level as well so you know I think it'd be unfair if, if I didn't give him a shout out uh, an absolute legend of a, of a man here and has done you know so much over over the years and you know his record at at every level kind of has has spoken for itself. So uh, I, if you don't mind, I just mm. to get the plug as well. It'd be brilliant, and wish him all the best. Uh, I don't think he'll sit still too too easily. I know he's involved with Canali, his own club now. So I, I wish him all the best with them, but not too much luck as long as he doesn't beat our boys throughout the year. <laughs> no, no, he's he's an absolute living legend. So best wishes to to him, and I, and I know it's it's not retirement for Dom. It'll be just another step, you know. So is that retirement from the school itself? Is it or? retirement? Yeah. From so I think he is five, finished with five, six McCrory's Jeez, under Hogan as well, you know, so, you know, yeah. he's done, and, and obviously he wouldn't yeah. be taking them every year as well, so I don't know how many years he took the McCrory, or what that record is, but um, unbelievable, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in our lifetime, kind of clucker, like in like men like that, and kind of I've said like but these the Sean Boyle into this world and like legends of the game, clucker, like in our lifetime before, well obviously we've me and you hopefully have many many years yeah. to go in this era, but like lads like that, men like that, clucker, they are very hard found. Very very much so, and uh, I suppose I like when, when you're working under somebody like that, you you try and learn as much obviously as you can for him. An unbelievable, just motivator, um, his. And I'm sure I'm not going to get into you know any hot water over this, but listen, you know, from a training perspective, he he just he brought he would have brought trainers in. He kind of knew what he was good at and and where you know his, his kind of eye uh, strengths and, and weaknesses were, and and he would have you know really kind of you know pushed those strengths on on his squad and to get a change room going. He was unbelievable. Um, to you know, I suppose I build. A warfare against the opposition, just again second and on. You know, but there were not too many days where you're going to, you know, playing under them where sometimes you were ready to, to nearly bite the, the opposition's ear off, so to speak. You know, <laughs> he just had you, he had you at that level as well. Um, but you know, not not even just that. You know, the way he acquitted himself off the pitch. You know how he spoke, how he spoke with players. You know, was putting his arm around players. You, you know that that's that takes you. You know, certain. You know qualities as well from from a managerial point of view, and and he he just I could could do that, and and you know when when he spoke in a room, people listened, and you're right, it's come back to those Sean Boylan's, um, you know all all those kind of I hate to say an older generation of managers, I would even hate to, to put him in that category because he he is at the top of his game for a long time because he's constantly evolved as well, and 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 that's what makes him, I suppose. Who he is, but um, I, I can remember. I can remember him, but I think it was maybe ran a fast level, which is kind of in around fifth year. And myself and uh, a couple of the other other players. Um, I think white boots were were possibly the first colour of boots to come out. Um, I'd say he loves them. We are going back now, and, and, and now there's no black boots, so so we're going back quite a number of years. Oh, Amy Cole McKinnon reminds me of this. Okay. <laughs> so I think the first pair now, maybe you could you could help me maybe do the re research on this, but um, we were about fifth year at that stage. I oh. ran a fast, and listen, we didn't have much money. I'm not going to tell you lay, and, and white boots were were the scene. So myself, I think it was Paddy Flanagan, possibly Chrissy Murphy. Uh, we decided that that we would DIY our own our own boots at this stage. So I think we landed down to the local car shop, I think it might have been Breen's, and buy some car spray paint. And um, so, listen, it took us a bit of time, uh, kind of masking up the, uh, I think they might have been Puma Kings, possibly that stage. There wasn't too many boots on, on the, the market in these days, but anyway, we, we masked up the, the good old Puma Kings and cut a long story short then, we think we had red. 
Uh, so we thought we'd just go one more than the white. We'd add a little bit of red under the boots. So we spray painted the, the boots, the Puma boots red. And uh, yeah, just remember, listen, we were we were high fiving ourselves. We pulled the mask and tape off. You know, before any of these boot companies have started doing all this, maybe maybe we were ahead of the time, you yeah, know. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Before, before these boot companies all started doing this, we we just thought this was unbelievable that we were going one step ahead of white boots. We were red. I think we possibly were blue as well, spray paint, but Listen, they, they were unbelievable. We had a couple of trial runs before we got to, to run a fast training as well. So we were absolutely delighted that the paint wasn't coming off, you know. So we'd, we'd done this amazing job. We landed in our first training session under under good old Dom. And Dom looked at them and asked us, what what were they? Yeah. You know, he obviously knew what they were. And at that stage, he let us go through the whole session, pulled us quietly one-on-one. -on -one at the end the of the Ever wear them back at the end of the train. So, no. We, we soon found a way, John, how to get the paint off. <laughs> so oh, we're, I'd say so. I'd say so. We had money for another pair of boots. We were going to Babby and Daddy, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Scourge, yeah. whatever. Else. But, it's but you know, that's that's one of the many dumb, dumb moments. But we, we loved them for it. Listen, that was it. We loved them for it, you know. So, um, the, the joys, the joys. But, uh, no, listen. Um, and, and obviously, you know, I, I know his, his two his two lads well as well. You know, I'd love to see the, those two. You know, um, when, when you look at the Fermanagh setup as well. Oh, Tomas Murray, Carrigan, and is the Tomas, 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 it, it, just in the side, like it, Tomas. Geez, I remember him back in 2013, and was it even 15? He is an absolute baller. Yeah. yeah. Oh, listen again, and Rui's the, the, the same. You know, and, and the two lads. I know, I know they've they've given a big commitment now with, with their dad involved in Canali, but somewhere along the lines, you, you know, I suppose at at, at inter county level, all, all you need, I suppose, if you can have a solid maybe twenty, you know, you can kind of work with that as well. And every every county, you know, you, you can only just look at Monaghan and, and look at their population as well, and you know what they've done over the last number number of years has been unbelievable as well. So uh, I, I think if we can if we can get those, you know, you know, two lads out and, and just kind of build, a, you know, the best squad we can. If you have those Collins back, you know, I'd, I'd love to see the, the two lads back as well. And sorry, there's another man that's gone. It, it seems like a retirement party. Malachy Rogue's gone as well. When we, we talk about Monaghan and Malachy is finished in, in St. Joseph's. I'm not sure how many years Malachy had done, but, you know, he, he's in that mode of, of Dom as well. So oh, yeah. congratulations oh, yeah. to, to Malachy as well. And, and I know he's always busy and I best wishes to, to him as well. He might be going back to Monaghan. He'd be a great shout, wouldn't he? Uh, there's, there's been chat. Uh, I think there's been chat. Um, I think a, a few counties have possibly. He'd be a great even. man for any county, yeah. I uh, and and listen, he's always at a, a, quite similar to Dom, I suppose as well. You know, no know, knows his strengths and, and kind of weaknesses, and I uh, he he would bring a really good backroom team in. You know, with the likes of maybe Porter and um, his boy Dropsy as well. He would have always worked with a. Uh, Aye, uh, he, he'll bring in that backroom team and he'll do a good job. But listen, I don't know what way. I suppose Derry now could be a bit of a write-off, John, this year with you know their progress and, and their campaign. I don't know what way they're... He's with Glenn Bahra, isn't he? Yeah. He is, yeah. he is. So I don't know what way the, you know, they're going to do things down in Derry if, if that's going to, you know, I, um, work in terms of are they going to nominate a club for Ulster Club. I don't know what way the, the jury or that Derry Championship is, is planned at the moment, but... Maybe you could look into that, but I don't know uh, what the circumstances are there. But I know, listen, obviously they had won it last year, which was massive for Waddy Reams, and and uh, they'll probably be looking at Ulster uh, and, and trying to push on in Ulster if they can get through Derry again this year. And, and I think that's the reason why he was brought in, you know, as well. So yeah, yeah. best wishes on, on that. Yeah, he was a serious man. I'd love to see him back in the county game. I think, obviously, with Banty McInerney stepping away from the Monaghan fold, you know, like it, they could do worse to get him back, you know, but who knows, right? Who knows? Who knows? And obviously, James Horn gone from AO, and yeah, there's a lot of lot of job opportunities opening up there, uh, Clucker. So we'll wait and see. Um, obviously, four massive, or sorry, three massive games this weekend, God. We're, we're coming near the very end of the championship, and man. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking stuff. I can't believe we'll have the All Ireland in July, but there we go. So we have the Total Cup final on Saturday, Calvin against us, Mead, uh, Clucker. Obviously, it'd be a great way to start the weekend. Two attacking teams, be a very tight game, a lot, tighter than a lot of people think it. Um, but here we go, Calvin v West Mead this weekend. Yeah, um, it will be. We, we have played West Mead. Just as a county over the last number of years, we, we just seem to always kind of be pitted against them or, or get them in, in maybe a backdoor or a qualifier. Um, 
they're an extremely squat or strong side, uh, very, very pacey. Um, quite similar, actually, to Calvin in, in many ways. So it will be a very interesting affair. Um, I've always loved Canellan playing, and in, in, he kind of floats between midfield. He can be half forward for them as well. Um, and they have... Uh, they, they have pace and power in, in a lot of areas. They, they are quite sharp up front. Um, we, we struggled with them and we, you know, we drew with them in, in the league. There, there was a bit of a contentious point as well uh, on, on that given day as well, not, not given for ourselves. Yeah. But um, I, again, they've, they've kicked on. I know they've, they've really put a lot into the, the, their training over the last number of months as well and, and they'll be looking forward to it as well. And then, listen, you, you yourselves and Calvin, um, credit to, to Ricey who were chatting a couple of weeks ago and, and Mickey Graham and, and the backroom team there as well you know I, I suppose they were a bit like ourselves using it as a, another opportunity to to spend more time with the players um, and I know the players listen, were very disappointed after that Donegal defeat and, and a defeat that I listen a couple of, of just mistakes more than anything else you know that at, at crucial times you know, you know killed them in the game but you, you know the, the league campaign, uh, and, and you look at league positions as well, you know, Division 4 probably was a bit unfair, but like anything else, you, you know, there was a lot of investment into that Ulster final win a number of years ago, and something probably has to give somewhere along the line. So they've regrouped, they've, they've reset, um, you know, you know, they play a way, in a way that, you know, the players like, the players know, um, and, you know, the, there is strength and depth in, in that squad as well, and you could see that from from even that day against our, ourselves, um, and and the, you know, you know there, there is talent all around the the pitch as well. But um, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really interesting affair. It'll, it'll be interesting in, in Croke Park. I wasn't overly, uh, I suppose, I that last day with with yourselves in Croke, in Croke Park. I thought you underperformed probably in Croke Park. You know, Calvin underperformed in Croke Park. So it'll be interesting to see in the bigger spaces what way that will materialise. But um, I, I think just Calvin shared it. They, they do share it and, and just share it for me. But I think it's going to be a tighter affair than maybe what people think. You know, I think people will put Calvin as strong favourites, but it will be certainly tighter than, than that. Yeah, no, a lot of people seem to be going with me. A lot of people seem to be going Calvin. So it's a real, real 50 50 game. I suppose the game against Ligo as well, Cooker. You know, Calvin yeah. were quite open at the back. You know, we did concede yeah. a lot of goal chances and. You know, if some of them went in, it would have been a different story. So and the one thing is, three weeks from the game, you know, Mickey Graham's been blessed with the amount of time. Maybe he's had to assure yeah. up the defence. You know, better man than um, you know, Ryan McMahon to do that, I suppose. But, you know, if the rest of me get them goal chances like Sligo did, it could be a different affair altogether. Absolutely. Um, and I suppose... It's probably a bit of freshness as well, the fact that they're coming into play. Westmeath, who were in Division 3, you know... Division four is it's an ugly league and I know from chatting a couple of, of Calvin natives throughout the, the actual campaign as well and some of them being from from Mullahorn and the club as well, you know, they, they weren't overly impressed with Calvin throughout the league campaign. But listen, we, we were there ourselves in division four for a number of years ah, with yeah. the it's, it's an ugly league and, and you know, you just have to get out of it. Now, Calvin have obviously played Sligo probably I uh, again the last number of, of, of seasons, you know, would know them reasonably well and you know, I suppose I it's it's just one of them games you have to get over. And I I know listen Slego had a number of goal chances the last day against them as well. Um I, I, I still believe even if they would have took the goal chance, chances that Calvin would have kicked on, you know, I still believe they're for another couple of levels above that as well. And it you it's sometimes I when you're when you're playing against sides that you just kinda of get dragged into you know, those battles and tussles and you know and and uh, you just have to find a way to get through it you know so it, i do think this will be you know i a, a better opportunity for for calvin to basically i uh, show people you know what, what they're capable of as well and uh no I, I wish them all the best uh you know and, and especially i suppose those mullahorn lads at the weekend as well and i'd love to see cormac really getting a wee run out as well and i know killian was was very good that last day against the uh, Slego and uh, yeah, it'd be brilliant now if, if uh, they can get on and, and push the whole thing on. And Cormac uh, McHugh's involved as well oh, at yeah. the moment. The ones he's been involved, so it's it's brilliant now for for the club to to have those players in and uh, brilliant. Listen, that you know, hopefully they can they can push on and, and uh, get that result and and listen be the first winners. It, it'll still be nice to say that you know somewhere along the lines as well. And, and let's hope the GA commit to it as we said earlier on and, and push that competition on.
I suppose when we played uh, yourself a few weeks ago at Clover, what impressed you most from maybe the Cavan end of things? Like, was I know obviously Thomas Gallican's goal in the first couple of, but the first minute essentially. Like, what what impressed you most of a Cavan that day? Um, <clears throat> their communication probably was, was massive for me. You know, um, from from the sideline uh, on on I and and on to the actual um, playing field as well. You know, players were were very well drilled in terms of you know. And it seemed to be a big thing. They were they were constantly looking for mismatches in terms of uh, players. Um, I the, the rotation of players up front to try and get mismatches, and and that mismatch, you know, was maybe something to do with maybe height. It was something to do with maybe pace. And um, they were constantly looking for for those the weaknesses probably in 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 terms of our players. And once they they sensed you know, you know that they were getting maybe one on one opportunities with with players that they could do damage on you know it, it was capitalised on and uh, you know you know that understanding from from bench to to pitch was was very very good and I was very very impressed with that and we we did listen we we knew a wee bit about that going into the game but I suppose when you when you're playing you know and, and you're in that environment you know the, the game moves so quickly as well and, and for players to to have that understanding and to be able to adapt and move things around and, and evolve as the game it, you know is obviously ebbing and flowing as well you know I, I can't I can't but you know credit you know everybody involved you know and, and that was a big thing for us that that we learned very very quickly that once you know Calvin sensed it and mismatched then they went to town on it and, and you know they've obviously worked on that for maybe the last number of years and um, and obviously, you, you know, we we I were put to the sword that day as well because of that. So you know, it's it's something that really impressed us, you know, from the sideline. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and Westmead end of things. Uh, Clucker, obviously, you were talking rightly there for breaking Ellen. We all know about the power and strength of John Heslin when he's on form. You're looking at eight nine points, so it's uh, it's going to be a stiff test. I but listen, I'd imagine maybe the likes of Jason McLaughlin might go man to man on, on Heslin. You know, we we held him reasonably quiet in in, in the league. You know, um, I think John, yes, if you give him space and room, and he's a very clever player, he will try and manipulate tight spaces. Maybe trying to screen of one or two players, and I just think his his maybe better days in terms of pace and stuff are, are behind them. So okay, you know, okay. I certainly think those matchups may maybe the likes of Jason it could be the likes of maybe Faulkner might go out to him as well and maybe pin him as well. So, you know, yes, you give him a scoring opportunity in terms of free taking inside certain areas, he will capitalise as well. But on the same front, you you know, um you will probably do the same. You, you know, I expect Galligan to to make hay uh, if any freeze inside 65, you know, he's an unbelievable striker of the ball. Um, there's big road in there as well, you know, if, uh, I am an, an admirer of, of the big man. Um, he seems to be getting better, you know, with age over the last number of years as as well. So I just think, I, you, you know, you, you have some some better kind of key players. And we know, obviously, sorry, both Galligans, not just the, the keeper. Um, I, we... we just know, uh, we, we just thought now that day that if we could get our matchups right, even against yourselves, that, that we could make um, hay against yourselves. But, you know, I, I just think you, you had far too much for ourselves. And again, at the weekend against Westmead, you know, just think you've a bit more bit more strength and depth in your, in your squad overall. And I think that would be the, the deciding factor. And if you're to call it, who would you be thinking? I'll go Cavan. I will go Cavan. I don't think it'll be maybe the, the scoring spree that everybody thinks, but I do think Cavan will, will edge it and uh, two, three points possibly. So. Mm. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> but we don't do anything straightforward up here, uh, Cooker. So <laughs> I'm, I'm preparing myself for anything. And obviously, the other game that the Derry against Galway. Um, unforeseen territory the last couple of years to these two teams. Obviously, Galway, it's a huge chance to get to the final. A Rory Gallagher studied uh, Derry team, so it's going to be an intriguing game, and um, yeah, we can't wait for it. Yeah, and listen, I'm, I'm looking forward. Hopefully, I'll, I get the Calvin game in as well. I'm hopefully going to get down at the weekend as well, um, and and take all in. Uh, yeah, listen, you, you know I'd be close to Rory and and uh, friendly with with Rory, and uh, I, I know the level that he works with. He, he was unbelievable with it with ourselves and and from our and. His record, even with ourselves, you know, was second to none as well. Um, I know that over the last number of weeks there'll be no stone, and I mean no stone un- unturned. You know, mm. he he has those lads away, 
you know, prepping every weekend leading up to to any game. Um, he takes them away for for training camps every weekend leading up to games. You know, so he he has the backing of of the county as well um, behind them, and he, he just works at, a, at an unbelievable level. You know, when I, when I was talking earlier on about myself, maybe not switching off. You know, you, you may add another two or three levels to, to that man. You know, and and what he does, um, and and he has built. Something you know over the last number of years, a lot of people you know said that he could he could struggle with. He has pulled and and got a, a county together that that let's face it, were in disarray, stuck in Division Four, no real talent going out to play for their, their county clubs, killing each other. Um, a massive focus on, on club um, intentions, but nothing in terms of county. So he has pulled uh, you know you know that job around massively, and I know he's disappointed not to to get promoted. From Division Two into Division One, and uh, the, the game against Galway actually in the league was was probably critical, you know, you know, in, in terms of that. Um, but but listen, I, I know you know come the weekend, he'll be licking his lips, and and he he will have that side just you know ready to to really go out and go after the, this Galway side, and he, he'd be hoping, listen, that there is probably a bit of a hangover from um, Galway's, you know, you know, win over Armagh, and. Um, but either way, listen, he, he will have those lads in an unbelievable shape and have, you know, tactically just he, he will be on point for the weekend. And, and uh, you know, for, for I myself, you know, I, I, I think there's only going to be one winner and I can, I can only see it being um, Derry at the weekend. Same here, yeah. yeah. Same here. And I know that's odd to say for an all Ireland semi-final, but I've just been unbelievably impressed by Derry this year. What's impressed you most about them? Is it just... The strength and depth when the run, the run as a unit, like well, at the jersey, you'd be exhausted watching them, uh, Cooper. Aye, but you know that has went on from that's that's been a gradual build, obviously over the last number of years. You know, you look at the backroom team, you know, Big Enda Muldoon's in there, who, who's an unbelievable leader of, of men when he was playing, and, and I know he can galvanise the change room probably by himself, let alone Rory. But the people he, he's put around him as well, Peter Hughes. Is actually involved with with Ulster Rugby, and I know a lot of the work that that he would be doing um, has probably changed, um, and and maybe they are turning the wheel a little bit as well. So in terms of over the last number of years, yes, you know there's been a large kind of sway in S and C and what we're doing behind the scenes at inter county level, and obviously that's that's seeping into to maybe clubs as well. But um, he, he for for me, Peter Hughes, and kind of. Knowing and understanding some of the work that he, that he is doing as well with with that setup, and um, he is, has a lot of kind of focus now on, on some of that kind of rugby kind of work as well, you know, and what he's doing with Ulster rugby as well. So he, he's taking a lot of that, and he, he's kind of putting that in. And and I he, he's just changing the way players move, and and you've actually said it there now, you know, and. and that a lot of that would have came from you know some of the stuff that that they would be doing as well you know you know you'd, you'd look at them in, in their warm ups maybe they're not doing it out in, in Croke Park on the pitches but they're using water bags you know I don't know if you're you're um, or you know anything about them John but they're using water bags you know the, the equipment in it and stuff they're using you know is, is a lot of money as well so Derry are buying into absolutely everything that these boys are asking and requiring and you know that's shown on the pitch and his access to these boys. You know, whenever I suppose he wants as well. I think there's a really good age profile. I think they're all they're all kind of in jobs that, you know, suit suit that, suit that lifestyle as well. So you know, like what does Rory do as a profession? Like, how does he find the time or what? <laughs> <laughs> you can ask him that. When I'm asking him that every time I see him, I goes, "What do you actually do?" You know, and yeah. you know, I, I think he's involved in possibly sales, and um, possibly construction as well. I don't know, but listen, he's he's uh, he's battered away and he has that flexibility. And, right, yeah. and listen, he he, as I said, you know, he's an unbelievable manager. He he's probably the best coach and manager that, that I've had the opportunity to work with, and and I've okay. certainly learned a lot from him. And um, and if you ask a lot of a lot of lads as well, they they would probably say that. The same that he is up there with the, with the best I've worked with, you know, as well. So, um, he he just is at a level where, you know, he he recognised the purple points of of other teams, and he he will go into to depth and, and look at the the patterns of other sides, and you know, he he will have a plan in place that will try and kind of I suppose neutralise what what the opposition is is doing, but also then to be able to impart you know the the strengths of of his side, and you know, I I know at the weekend he he will have that ready for Galway and. You know, then they'll go after them. You know, if 
he fully believes he can win an All Ireland this year, can't he? Like uh, I've like mm. a, lo- a lot of people are saying, John, you're you're off your head, but I can <laughs> like I'm telling you, he is smelling that All Ireland. He is, yeah, um, and he, he will never overlook. Listen, it's not a case of him overlooking. You know that the game at the weekend that is is by no means the case, but you know. I, I I would say whenever he seen the kind of the, the draw, whenever the the Ulster final, I suppose, and they put that to bed. Whenever he'd seen the draw and the possible permutations, he was probably, yeah, looking with one eye and saying, you know, we might have a bad pathway here to an All Ireland final. You know, we we might end up getting a couple of sides that have been in our league, which has transpired, and then you know we can look at maybe going to to an All Ireland final. So, and. and as much as you, you always say you're, you're looking at the next game, even from a playing perspective and even from a media perspective, you know, if, if you can sense, you know, that that kind of pathway is, is reachable, you could say as well, you know, then you're, you're probably going to have eyes on that. So he, he probably, I sensed when, whenever the draw was made, you know, that he, this is a real opportunity, you know, to maybe look at getting to an All-Ireland final. And um, listen, if they can get through the weekend, you know, and get through the, the weekend probably unscathed and still have that full play, playing squad fit, which I believe, you know, they will have, then, yeah, you know, who's to say, you know, that he wouldn't fear any of the sides in the final, like, I can tell you that as well. So, and he'll do his homework as well on them. And, yeah, um, he he will look forward to the weekend. And I suppose I, I hope, I just from a personal perspective and knowing him, that, that they do get over that as well. And it's nice to see other teams involved. 110%. Yeah. Back up as well, you know. Galway and Galway and the things as well. Obviously, they got over the line against our man penalties uh, last year. We called it hard to believe we're saying they got over the line of penalties. I don't know what you call it. So, our on them just on the side now. But uh, Galway, Shane Walsh, Damien Comer, they'll be looking to get to an all Ireland final as well. Absolutely. Um, and, and listen, there was, there was so much kind of right in their game play the last day. They, they should have had, you know, the game should have been wrapped up. I think they were when they were four or five, possibly up with with seven, eight minutes of injury time to play. The game should have been put to bed, you know, at that stage. And there, there were there were actually periods throughout that game where they, you know, they, they should have stretched the margin as well. I know you you have mentioned, you know, the the, the key components to that as well, and, and that side as well. Um, Comer for me was was probably quiet the last day actually, you know. So they're they're probably going to look for a little bit more from from. He him. wasn't quiet off the pitch. Well, he wasn't quiet, possibly. <laughs> um, and I, I listen. I like that. There, there is a streak in him, and I think that's what you need at that level as well. You, you know, and and he's an unbelievable player as well. Yeah. Um, Walsh frustrated me the last day, and and does frustrate me at times. We know, you know, he he could be and is possibly one of the one of the best players on on, on the planet. And um, it oh, would be great. scary, scary marking him, you know, because of you know you know him being so strong in, in both like sides. No, absolutely not. I would have, well... In your pump. <laughs> I, I, might, I might stretch the, 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 the boundaries in certain other areas, but listen, he, he's a big, strong lad as well. You know, he, he can handle himself. You, you need protection. You would need plenty of protection against him. Um, but I suppose, listen, when you, when, you get, when you get to Croke Park, I suppose that, that's a big thing as well. You know, you can somehow... In, in maybe qualifiers and, and maybe in some games in, in, in the league and maybe in, in your build up you, you can you can look possibly at at getting maybe other numbers to, to match up other players. You start to notice when you get to the latter rounds of, of you know the big competitions that you know sides are you're not just you know pinpointing two, three, four players that you have fifteen players to deal with, you, you know, and you know, you know, there's there's talent from absolutely everywhere and you, you know you can only look at a game goal by the last day and and they have players all around the pitch. You know, even is it Conroy and too that the long haired kid was darting up the pitch and, and making, you know, unbelievable runs and, and just opening up, you know, defences and, and the armada fence and, and causing havoc and in transitions. You know, when you're you're looking at you know, you know, when you get to the latter stages, you have that in abundance. So, you know, when you, when you get to the latter stages, yes, you want your your, your key players performing, but there, there's so much more when it when it comes to that you know you need 15 players, 18 players, 19, 20 players, all making an impact, and and that's what it is when it comes to those big days. You know, everybody needs to be doing something, and um, to to get over the line as well. And you know, as as much as you know, watch the last day was was yes clinical at times, but 
he needs to take, I suppose, the erratic kind of play out of out of his game as well. I know he kicked, he was running down the left hand side. Maybe John, you can remember this as well at, at the last mm. kind of phase of the game. I think we were a point up, and he he was being bottled up on that side, but he turned inside and tried this wonder pass, which allowed Armada up the pitch oh, and get. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or maybe maybe it was for the goal as well, but and that, that happened a couple of times. So game you know, management fucker. Hopefully he takes that out of his game, and you know that that for me is is as good as you're going to get then in the country. So, but he he needs to learn, and he, he needs to learn that. And hopefully, Park Joyce had sat down with him and maybe watched that as well, and said, "Listen, you know, you need to take this out of your game," and we we, we push things from there. You know, but it's an intriguing encounter. It, it would be nice if Galway were on the other side, um, and just you know swap it about to to see those two new faces, obviously. Um, in, in the two semi-finals but listen we're going to have a new face in an All-Ireland final which is another nice thing as well now for the first time in God knows how many years as well so something to look forward to Absolutely who are you thinking Derry? I'm going to go with Derry I have I have to go with them although uh, I do I do like Galway as well mm. and I have best, but I'll, ha- I'll have to go with uh, Derry I and I'll I'll have my Derry cap on the weekend for, for Rory and Rory alone and that's about the height of it <laughs> <laughs> Best wishes, best wishes to him and, and the backroom team as well. Brilliant stuff. The small matter of Dublin against Kerry. <laughs> um, tickets are still on sale, uh, which I'm very surprised about. Maybe it's 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 yeah, it's it maybe the way things are at the minute. I'm not sure. People maybe not affording to go, but there you go, Clucker. It's a, it's a massive game. We still don't know about the fitness of Colin Callan, David Clifford, James McCarty. If either's face, if one plays, either team will win. I give Dublin a serious chance in this game. What's your thoughts? I have heard, and I go, of course, you can't believe anything like that, um, that, that Conor Callan was possibly a fracture um, on the leg as well. So I can't see him possibly uh, being involved at the weekend, which for me is massive. He, I suppose, has been a real you, you know, turning point. You know, you go back to that Kildare game, um, and you, you've seen that he, he really makes them tick for me. He's the one that is key in, in how they press. He's the one that's key in how they stretch teams. He's a massive leader for them. You know, it, he just is robotic in, in how he plays in terms of their, their system. And he's a real cog in their system for me. So that's that's a massive, massive loss for me um, in that Dublin side. Uh, overall, I, I kind of see... Kerry kind of maybe going at this from from a different angle. I I would see them being as aggressive as they have ever been on kickouts and trying to get kind of get real joy on, on that press and trying to squeeze the, the the life out of Dublin. And if they do so, I I think they can get real joy. I think they've got match winners in in many different areas, and I think they've got a bench for the first time in, in God knows how many years. And and you're looking at um I suppose I what what they do at that bench. You know even if Splan comes on, you know you know. It depends, obviously, who they start, obviously, as well. Sorry, but you, you do have depth in that Kerry squad, and it's something they haven't had over the last number of years. You have Gainey's, you know, you know, you have the two Cliffords. Um, be interesting to see, obviously, how how they fare out and, and what the matchups will, will be in them. But I, I just think they've got it a wee bit more now up front, and I think mm. defensively, you know, Dublin just aren't where they were in two or three years' time. Um, and you know, I even th- think the likes of of Cooper maybe at six might be might might be something that that can be exposed as well. I think I think his legs are possibly you know just not where they were over the last number of years. Um, but again, who's to say? You know, Dublin could could turn up on their day and steamroll them and come out and and be the Dublin that we've seen over two three years or the last decade. Sorry, and and take away the last couple of years. Um, but it's 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 a massive encounter. It's an intriguing encounter. Kerry have never beaten Dublin when when they've needed over the last mm. ten years. So that kind of rings a bell then on, on the other side of things. So I suppose let's let's see what happens. I uh, you know come the weekend, um, could be a draw. Maybe maybe another penalty scenario. Jeez, but uh, yeah. I would lean towards Kerry. Uh, I, just, I just think they've been building for this moment now, and for me, it just it just uh, might be a turning point for them. The pressure on Kerry as well, and obviously, you know, the fans, it's all Ireland's or nothing, and I suppose if Dublin were to get over the line, there'd be serious disappointment in the, disappointment in the kingdom, like I was at the Throne Kerry game last year, and the Kerry fans just look like to see a pile of ghosts, uh, Clucker, so if they don't get over the line this Sunday, when will they ever get over the line? 
You're right, and when you when you look you know you're looking at the likes of you know just going through ah uh, some some of their team as well. You've Stephen O'Brien, probably late twenties. You know you have Daphne Ganey would be kind of in and around the middle late twenties. You know, and and you're right over the last number of years, these lads. I'm Sullivan, sorry, is another one. You know, these lads have been knocking on the door and and just not you know they haven't seemed to get over the line. Somewhere along the lines, you, you know, you, you're you're thinking to yourself then. You know, will it, will I ever kind of beat the likes of the, the Dublins and, and make this kind of next step as well? Um, they, they need to. Uh, th- there's going to be a uh, serious probably scrutiny, I, I would say, and and no more so than maybe the likes of the RT in the Sunday game will probably really go to town. You know, on, on this group of players if if they don't get over the line. Um, so it's an it's an, an important game for for them and where they have developed over the last number of years. But again, you know, it's it's that Dublin factor and, and what Dublin's gonna gonna turn up. Have Dublin had enough, I suppose, games over the, the last number of, of months to prepare them for, for this level as well, you know, and, and where Kerry are at. Um their league campaign obviously was a was a write off and, and the relegation didn't help. Um and I would have always looked at, at the league campaigns being a real kind of Benchmark, you know, you know, maybe a number of years ago you couldn't have got away with it. You you would have turned around and maybe used the, the league sparingly, not really cared about it, and went into a championship championship and maybe really kicked on from there. But the last kind of number of years, it, it has been the opposite. You you know that teams really use the league uh, as the, their framework and groundwork to go into championship. And if you usually have a bad league campaign, it doesn't really stand you in, in good stead moving forward. So um, Dublin and saying that have. have you know, beating the likes of, of Kildare and, and we'll come out of that Leinster to a championship and we've kind of turned our heads thinking, oh, well, maybe they're, they're not too bad, you know, but um, they still have, listen, you, you know, your Kilkenny's will be there, they're about your, your rocks, you, you know, you still have depth in that squad that mm-hmm. can again kick on. There's probably another five, six players on that, that bench for, for the weekend that we know very little about that could come into the bench right at the weekend and could come on and, and do a job as well with, with obviously that strength and depth in, in uh, Dublin football as well. So it, it's certainly one that, that licks the, the lips for the weekend. Um, and, and it's a nice, sorry to finish on that point, it's, it's a nice point from your, yourself as well, you know, with, with the current kind of economic state as well. Wouldn't it be nice if, if the GA stepped in and, and maybe made a move and said, listen, you know, we're going to make a reduction in the prices and fill the stadium, you know, and, and say that, you know, they're going to work with the people on, on this as well. Like because it's mad it's not sold out. Has been. Like that's that game, how that game's not sold out, <laughs> you know. Well, it's, it's, it's clearly that reason, you, you know, as well, that people don't have the income and, and we are facing tough, you know, economic times coming ahead and, and maybe that's something maybe you, you could push out as well, you know, and push to the GA as well that, you know, wouldn't it be nice if, if they stepped in at this late, late stage, even given out to, to youth at clubs or, you know, some late push just to, to fill the stadium. Like, I, I just find that crazy and, and, and that our national stadium is is sitting with, with a load of dormant seat, seats when we come to... I, I didn't know that, sorry, until you had made that point as well, John, but can we not do something to fill it up? You know, and I'm sure we can. Yeah, no, because the tickets were on sale for the Cav and with me, Derry Gold game last Monday, and then some of the best tickets have been released this week. So I don't know, panic buying last week, and then people might have got bad seats last week, and then you could get the best seats in the house. So it could just. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tucker. Who's, yeah. Over, uh, who's over the market? And you, you know, you looked at that awfully temporary, even that hurling match. Um, during the week, which was an unbelievable game, an unbelievable, an unbelievable finish to the game. You had a mass crowd at that. Why could they not put that game on? You know, surely somewhere along the lines, they, they can re, rejig, juggle a game here and there and say, oh, well, you know what, that would fit the purpose here. Put that in. It'll give great exposure to, to the minors, whatever it is. It could be a women's game. Like, like I, I just don't get it at times. I just don't get some of the, the thought behind um. Yeah, some some of the games and how we can't have maybe juvenile games on still ahead. Maybe you know some of the senior games, even some ju- juvenile finals, the, the twenty one final. Like why why could it not be held back slightly later and, and put you know in and around these times as well? So it just uh, it frustrates me. But we're going to bang our head all day over that. So we are. It's, it's, it's crazy stuff and even the all Ireland final in a couple of weeks time and that'll be the season over so oh god yeah like it was it was hard beat happening in the first Sunday of September as well Clucker so but anyway look that's the GA for you and who is going to win Dublin or Kerry? 
I am going to go with Kerry for this one. I think they do just get over the line on, on this game. And uh, I'll go Derry all out. If I'm not chatting you before then, I think I'm going to hang my hat on, on Derry and and to, to bring it home to the uh, Ulster region again. Happy days, happy days. And uh, just before you tip on, you've been brilliant with your time, Clucker. Do you, you miss playing? Uh, because obviously I would have been... I like God, Calvin for Mana, we played as many and many a time, and I've seen great battles, and we always have great battles, and you just look like you absolutely love playing, and you'd see your girl to play for your county. So, do you miss putting on the green and white? Absolutely, I love himself. Still trying to get a bit of green there when I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's um, listen. It's for some people, and I, I kind of hate those lads who who come out and. Can you know, say it's a real grind and a real bore and a real this and real that? Um, it's, it's like anything else. Listen, do you want to say it's like you sitting doing a podcast now or, or me giving you know, a bit of time now as well? You know, if you want to do something, nobody's putting you to the pin and collar to, to do it or not do it, so to speak, you know, as well. So, you, you know, I nearly became regimented in terms of I, it, it was a large part of, of my lifestyle, but. You know, I keep trying to say to the, the Mullahorn boys, even the Fermanagh lads last year or the Burr lads, there, there's nothing beats, you know, you know the, the adrenaline and, and the, the testosterone that, that comes with, you know, crossing that line and being part of the, the playing side of things. You know, you, you don't really replace that ever. And they are the best days of your, your life, no matter what. And the play of it yourself, you know, that that's, that's how it is and that, that's how it was. And uh, for me, it's been about... Maybe fill in ways how, how to fill that void. Sorry, not fill ways, but fill the void and, and to, to try and do that. So um, business was 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 a good void. You know, it, it kept me busy in many different ways. And I suppose it, it is working with a team in a different capacity there as well in, in, a, in a work team. And obviously then getting back involved, you, you know, it, I think it might have been two, three weeks, John, where me and the missus were killing each other one Saturday. And I, she just said, what are you doing? You may as well just excuse me, friends, piss off and just go and do something, you know, and get back involved. And I, you know, that that's just us. And, and that's, maybe that's why it works. Don't, don't, don't tell her I said that. Maybe that's why it works. We don't see each other that much. But no, it's it's uh, brilliant. No, it's brilliant. And I, and I loved every bit of it. And no matter when I, I had the opportunity to, to play for my county, I was grateful of, of every manager who, who gave me that opportunity. And, you know, hopefully somewhere along the lines, maybe I can get, get back in, involved in, in that capacity as well and maybe give that opportunity to, to players as well. But for, for me, anyone who gets the, the chance and if, if we can even develop those players in, in Mullahorn to do that, you know, that'd be that'd be a massive, you know, thing for us, you know, because, you know, that that's that's a big thing in, in management as well. And that's something that myself, Shane and, you know, anyone who I've worked with, you know, if we can develop players to, to be... Just better players and better people as well. That, that is, I know it sounds a bit corny and a bit cheesy, but that's what you want. You know, you want to develop, you know, a, a good change room and and uh, just prosperous, you know, in, in every department. And if you can do that with with a side, that's that's brilliant. Whether it's players going on to county or players going on, maybe if it is to, to America or, or get, you know, making making their own lives better off the pitch as well. You know, it's it's certainly something that you know it, it helped my life in many different ways. You know, on and off the pitch. So so. Yeah. Just I, I I would take it back in the morning if I got a chance. But yeah, I know by you. I knew by you over the years. You loved it, yeah. <laughs> I played a, a train last night. Done a bit of a run around with the soccer lads, and as you're just lucky, John. I'm sitting up today because me me hamstrings are in bits and me legs are in bits. And then I just I was I uh, contemplating this, this this morning a return in some capacity, maybe a bit of junior football. But uh, nah, I don't think it's going to happen. You know. Centre half back, it's never been the same since. Um, <laughs> is the game in a good place? Do you feel at the minute, generally? And um, I, I think I think I overall we we could do so much more um, to to I suppose eradicate the the, the and and deweed maybe some of the problems we we've, we've had in terms of we we've briefly mentioned competitions. Um, I, th- I think we can do a lot more within the game. It's brilliant to see some of the work that, that the GPA are now doing and bringing the, the women's organisation together. I think that's critical moving forward. You, you know, I think it brings together clubs and there's a real club kind of togetherness when you have a strong women's kind of presence and background as well, you know, you know, as well with with that. Um, 
I, I, you know, I, I hated a couple of weeks ago seeing the young lad Tiernan Kelly absolutely, you know, trial by by social media and crucified. You know, he is a good kid. I've, I've met him off the pitch. I've played against him on the pitch. He's, yeah, a warrior on the pitch. But that's that's the, the given nature of of the game as well. And he, he made a wrong mistake in, in the heat of the moment. You know, nobody talks probably about the fact that. You know, I think he he has had an injury that he has probably been frustrated. To it looks this, serious this. enough. I don't know. Have you seen his leg? Christ! Like, it, I, like I, I, I only I only seen a picture a couple of days ago. The bruise is unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, well, well, that's something that that I think within the game we don't we don't do enough of. You know, I don't know if we we give enough we're time a, to. We're a great society. Like, and I've, I've noticed it in recent weeks. Yeah. If you say something wrong in a podcast or anything, like we're an yeah. absolutely unbelievable society. When things are going wrong, we will throw the daggers. But when things are going yes. right, you're never here. Think, look, as you well know. Yeah, and and it's it's for me. There's no problem having an opinion and and yeah, throwing a dagger, but give an alternative or offer a solution if, if you're gonna you know criticize and you're, you're gonna overanalyze whatever the case may be then give the, the solution for the young lad you know he was absolutely hammered i, I did get it listen and, and i have experience of, of that firsthand as well in, in my own career um, and and I, I have no doubt listen he probably took wheels of abuse god knows he, he probably had to um leave his own social media profiles and, and probably i erase X, Y, and Z, and, and and it shouldn't be the case. You, you know, he, he he made a mistake like many people do. He probably was struggling to deal with the fact that his county were on the cold sorry of of uh, getting through to that, that semi final, and and him maybe feeling that he might have been part of it the way he should have been part of it because of the injury. You know, and and it's listen, it's hard within a management group as well to cater for that as well because again, I I have knowledge of that, but you know. What do we offer? What do we offer these players? You know, I think they threw six months at them whenever, you know, you go back to our processes. So I think the, the kid got six months for that um, incident, yet you could go up and stand in front of a person and, and headbutt them, for example, and break their nose into, smash their nose into bits, whatever the case may be. And I think they get, what, they get two games, maybe? 12 weeks, six weeks? I don't, I don't even know. I don't even think it's, it's minimal enemy, whatever it is. Yeah. So you're just... Looking at you know where where do we go and what do we do and and then the playing game has changed and evolved as well you know we, we can go one step further and and Ulster maybe is not that appealing to, to some people to watch you know in terms of stylistically you know and, and how teams conduct themselves because there there is so much at stake and it is one of the you know the key provincial championships as well so you know over over the years maybe there, there will be need for a, a change in some capacity to maybe speed the game up or to have less numbers maybe defensively as well to improve the, the game as a visual but you're just hoping that somewhere along the lines we, we talk about that thinking process and common sense somebody somewhere in Croke Park can sit down with everyone you know and, and the good people who watch and pay to watch the games and um, players you know your, yourselves in, in terms of the, the, the social media side of things as well and just come up with some collective understanding and agreement that you know this might be done better and we can work this better and I know I, I've went on a few tirades I know they hate copying soccer but every now and again then they do copy soccer or rugby or whatever it is you know that we can learn a lot from every sport um, and that I personally would love to see an integration of, of your your club and county, you, you know, league campaigns, it's something I actually sat down and, and, and wrote out one, one night um, again just to see if it would work. I, I think you, you could extend your your whole, you, you know, season if, if it worked properly. And I think it gives, it would give a real edge to the club football as well, side of things where, you know, if ourselves were, were to play yourselves in, um, and every two weeks, maybe there, there would be an inter-county game or maybe every four weeks an inter-county game. But for two weeks, you had accessibility, you know, to your, your all your players. And then after two weeks, your, your county manager is watching club games and you can pick your best 25, 30 players. You know, I think also it, it probably would cut back on, on your expenses overall, you know, as well. You know, I think it runs a wee bit deeper. You wouldn't have those uh, overall maybe expenses in terms of maybe, yeah, 
injured players. I know you would still be dealing and helping the injured, injured players get back, but you could be picking 25, 30 fit players to come into a squad to play maybe a county league game. Then you go back. And what you're picking ultimately is your, your 25, 30 informed players who are really putting it in. And, and I, I just think there are ways where we could integrate the leagues, the club leagues and the county league a bit better, um, which I think would, would add to what, what we're doing and it would give a real incentive for, for club players' football, you know. So it's something maybe down the line that, that I don't know, may change, may not change, but I think it could help, help the game massively. Absolutely, everyone has, everyone has ideas, but will be brought forward is the big thing. <laughs> um, last question, what players are exciting at the minute? What um, players would you pay to go see these days, uh, Mr. Cooker? I who would pay to see? Um, listen, I, I, I loved actually this year working with a young Alton Kelm. Um, mm. He came to our squad. He was struggling eye for a couple of years with, with injury. Um, I know he's only getting back to some type of form. I would have, I probably not maybe seen the skill set and, and the, the tools that he had until he came in. Um, but he, he's an unbelievably gifted and talented player and, you know, he is frightening pace. So, you know, I, I'd love to see him develop, not just for own county and, and just see how he moves over the next number of years. And I know I've tinted glasses with himself. Uh, yeah, but... Um, Listen, at, at, at the weekend, I, I can't wait to, to see Shane Walsh. You know, he would have been a disaster to mark in terms of you, you might have channeled him down one side thinking you're, you're going to maybe use the sideline and, and cut all his tools off. And then he just casually turns into the, the other side and boom, he's, he's knocked it over the bar. So he's un- unbelievable. I, I actually love, and I think I've tweeted a couple of times, I actually love that there's a... A young lad playing for Derry, Connor McCluskey, and, and I know he is the sort of namesake, but um, I kind of first came across him. It would have been in, in the Mechanic Cup at the start of the year, and, and from chatting Rory as well about him. Um, and maybe I, he's one to watch for, for the weekend. He, he defensively has all the tools, so he's, he's extremely strong. I would imagine he could be the matchup maybe for. for Maybe it's Finnerty plays in the corner. Is it Finnerty as well? Or Finnegan, sorry. Finnerty, Finnerty, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say he could be the matchup for, for him, but it's what he does then off the ball. So I, I know he's one of the key components in terms of, of if they get a quick kick out of the way, he's gone and he's rapid and he's up the pitch five, six, seven seconds and he's given the ball to, to one of the key forwards. So, you know, he, he's somebody who, who I've, I've, I've loved watching over the last number of months and he has come in completely under the radar and, and there's not too much talk about him even still. So um, I, I just I, I want to see him performing and I suppose Glass now since he's been home as well over the, over the last kind of, I suppose, year and a half, two years now, it'll be good to see how, how he's kind of kicked on having those those seasons behind him to, to see how he, he pushes on as well. But um I suppose that that's that's the kind of key players, and obviously, listen, we, we can't we can't but not say David, obviously Clifford as well, and he, I does so much right off the pitch as well. You, you know, he's a, he's a brilliant ambassador for for the sport, and and um, conducts himself unbelievably well, and and uh, seems to have settled in his own, you know, you know, lifestyle off the pitch as well. So, you know, best wishes to to him over the next number of years as well, and and hopefully, you know, we we see him um over the next 10 15 years flourish as well you know so that's that's i suppose the the four for me that i i certainly can't wait to see over the weekend there we go there we go mr mccluskey that was an absolute pleasure i'd love to ask you more but uh time's off the yes man thanks a million for uh joining me this week and of course this podcast is brought to you by orgaretch.com and it's actually his promo code jmac podcast to get 15 percent off on orgaretch.com get the best skins gloves equipment and attack today be attack minded Thanks a million, my man. Hopefully see you in the oh. league final in a few weeks' time. Um, yes. And uh, well, enjoy the weekend, my man. <laughs> I will. John, pleasure. And sorry again it took so late. I'll bounce on. Shall I see you then? Cheers, sir. Thank you.